Hello everyone, welcome to another segment of Intellectual Brainstorming and Academic Excellence. Uh, you will agree with me that we have been very proactive and uh, our lectures have actually helped a lot of people in their, in their, in their area of, what, of academic uh, pursuits. Um, welcome to another segment of Intellectual Brainstorming. And this platform is the Video News Week platform. And this platform is what is available on the Facebook and on YouTube, David Onewi. So we want to use this medium to, to appeal to you that if you have not actually followed us on, on Facebook or on the YouTube, you can do that right away. We will really appreciate that. Today we're going to look at something different, something dynamic, something very interesting, something that you will love, something that will, that will build up academically. And that topic is what we call a theories of a leadership. Theories of leadership. Now, what is a leader? We're going to look at who is a leader and the qualities and attributes that, that a leader should possess in a society, then we can say such a person is actually a leader. Now, effective leadership is what is indispensable for the accomplishment of what? For the accomplishment of the goal of any organization. So every organization has what? Objectives and what? And goals. So there are little concerns as what is what? A leadership. And to some, when you talk about leadership, it is synonymous with what? With holding upper level of a position in society. Other use the term leadership to, to mean you know the possession of certain characteristics such as what maturity, perseverance, alertness, and what and their intelligence. Now, to some leadership is useful to describe a category of uh, behaviors. According to this view, it is a dynamic process in which you know an individual behaves in a certain manner, thereby influencing others what to follow. So, what they're saying that, that leaders possess some certain qualities. That make people to, to follow them, or that make people to, to you know to be endeared to them, and that quality is what I call a charisma. So every leader must have a charisma. And what is a charisma? A charisma is an extraordinary quality that is possessed by an individual that makes people to, to follow him at one particular time or the other. We have such leaders in our society who are, who are possess what we call a charisma. So leadership can be defined as you know as influence. The art or process of influencing people so that they will strive towards and uh, they will strive willingly towards the achievement of what of group uh, goals. I will repeat it again. Leadership can be defined as influence, the art or process of influencing people so that they will strive willingly towards the achievement of what of a uh, group uh, goals. So leadership is the art of influencing individuals or group activities towards the achievement of enterprise objectives so the essence of leadership is what is followership so every leader must have a what a followership so in every society we have leaders and we have a followership that's what we're saying there so we have those that are leading and those that were that are following so it is the willingness of people to, to follow that makes an individual to a leader so when people have the willingness to, to follow you that means that what you are a leader you are a leader so leadership is more than what than power and authority it entails zeal and what and what I call a confidence. So for you to be a leader, you must have the zeal and the confidence. So leaders place themselves before a group of people as they facilitate progress and what and they, they inspire others to achieve what we call a organizational goal. So a leader will be an inspirer, it will be a motivator, it will be what somebody that will, that will encourage others to be able to achieve one thing or the other in what in the Life, then we say that well, such a person is actually a leader. Now, what are the qualities of what we call leadership? You know, determining the quality of a leader, you know, can be contradictory and what and be problematic sometimes. Why do I say that? The reason is that what that possessing the quality of a leadership is not dynamic, it varies from one individual to another. So the traits or the behavior of, what, of human beings are not the same. So for you to be able to, 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 to pinpoint to the quality of the leadership in an individual is what it's about because of, of the different or contradictory traits you know, possessed by, or by, you know, by those occupying leadership uh, positions. So they have different what? Different traits. The traits are not the same. Or what I mean is what is behavior. Their behaviors are, what, are not the same. But in a nutshell, what are the qualities of a leader? Number one. A leader must be able to, to inspire his followers. So when an individual inspires others to, to follow, 
they see that well, that such a person is a leader. Then a leader is also what we call a motivator. A leader is what is a motivator. Then number three, a leader should be optimistic. When you say somebody is optimistic, he sees good, good things what in other people. So he's always optimistic. He's always positive. He has what positive angles to what to things in life, and he's not pessimistic or he's not somebody that would that would believe in what in bad bad things happening all the time. Then a leader must have what we call a clear vision. He must have what we call a clear vision. He must have a clear vision. The leader must also be intelligent and be able to reason the judgment of what of events. When you have an individual like that, you, such a person was is a leader. Then a leader must possess what we call emotional stability. Emotional stability. Then the more, it, then number seven, a leader must possess what we call a charisma. A leader must possess what we call charisma. Don't forget, I mentioned charisma earlier on. I said a charisma is an extraordinary quality that is possessed by an if you are at one particular point or the other. Now, <coughs> let us now look at what we call Douglas McGregor theory of what? Of leadership. Douglas McGregor theory of what? Of leadership. Under the McGregor theories of, what, of leadership, we have what those that possess what we call leadership quality X and those that possess what we call uh, leadership quality Y and quality Y. So, McGregor is able to, 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 to differentiate leadership on what on two groups, theory X and what and theory Y. Now, let us quickly look at them. Douglas McGregor theory of what F X and theory Y. Now, management behavior is a major factor that was that first work, you know, that first work environment. So, management management behavior is very cardinal, is very very important. You know, the way which a leader view, you know, deal with, deals with his subordinates, you know, will be determined by the assumption he makes about people in what in general. That is the way he sees people will determine the way he's going to relate with them. So McGregor in his group, the term, the human side of what of temper crisis, holds that leaders generally, you know, hold one of one or two contra contrasting, you know, set of assumptions about people. You know, the behavior of a manager will be influenced. By what we call the particular set of what assumption he owes. So McGregor describes the what the two different sets of assumption as theory X and what and theory A A Y. Theory X managers made the following assumption about their subordinates. So we're talking about theory, the theory X manager now. What are the assumption that they make about what their subordinates? Number one is that the average human being has an in inherent dislike of work and will avoid work if he can. He will avoid work if he can. Then number two, most people must be quite directed or threatened with punishment to get them to put adequate effort towards achieving organizational objective. The third one is that what average human being prefers what to be directed, wishes what to be to avoid responsibility, as little ambition and wants security. So that is the theory X manager's assumption about his what his subordinate. Now, what about theory Y assumption about the, his subordinate? Now, number one is that physical and mental effort of in work is as natural as what well, has played or rest. Then threat of punishment and external controls are not the only means to achieve, you know, organizational objective. People will exercise, people will exercise direction of and self-control. Commitment to organizational objective is a function of what of reward. Associated with what with the achievement. Then number four, people learn under proper conditions to accept and seek a responsibility. Uh, then number five, under modern industrial life, the intellectual potentials are not are partially utilized. What we're not saying is that if you look at the two you know assumptions about what the two managers, the manager X and what our manager Y. The manager X is the according to the theory, he possesses what we call Autocratic nature. They are always autocratic. So manager X assumption about their body, uh, subordinates, they are always autocratic leaders. They rely on coercion and what and discipline and penalties to achieve what their objectives. Why the leaders holding theory Y assumption are what are more democratic, more liberal, and do not use what coercion to achieve the organizational goals. So what we're saying there is that theory why you know 
is more better off than what than the theory X managers because theory X managers they rely on what on force they threaten their workers they apply force they apply coercion they apply penalties everything little thing is a punishment to them and you know sometimes the workers well, they work in the work in the you know under under something that is not even good at all they don't work with a rest of nine but when you talk about the you know the theory why you know managers you know in terms of assumption towards that company they are more reasonable they have emotional stability they are more compassionate they are more liberal they are more accessible they are more intelligent and they are more understanding than when you talk about theory x managers so theory you why managers are more accommodating than what than theory x managers so the, on this note we're going to stop on that uh, you know uh, theories of what of leadership i still have more topics i'm going to bring up on that uh, theory so this is just a series one we're going to continue from there in a subsequent uh, lecture so if you have not uh, followed us on the facebook or youtube our our page or channel once again is david O'Neill. you can simply you know uh, just simply please subscribe to that channel or you follow us on what on the facebook and you agree with me that this lecture has also has been very beneficial to a lot of our students out there because of the you know uh, comments we're hearing from them and the feedback the positive feedback we're getting from them so please subscribe to our channel follow us on facebook or what or subscribe to our channel or what on the youtube don't forget to leave your comment and also to leave your like and also to share our videos with the teaming population out there that needed this uh, lecture in their lives thank you so much for coming up every time to watch our videos to our returning subscribers we say a big thank you and you have not subscribed please go subscribe now thank you till you see next time again we remain blessed thank you so much and goodbye